By now you've probably heard of the miracle weight loss drug Ozempic, but what actually is Ozempic? How does it work? How does it lead to weight loss? Is it something that you should be doing? And what do you absolutely need to know before you think about doing something like Ozempic? Hey, I'm Lindy Cohen. I'm a dietitian and a nutritionist, and I often go on TV and dispel these big questions we have around nutrition. So let's dive into Ozempic. So you might already know that Ozempic was originally created to be a diabetes medication to help people with their blood glucose management or their blood sugar management, and they found that it worked. But while they were testing people, they also realized, hmm, people are losing quite a bit of weight by taking Ozempic. And when I talk about taking Ozempic, what I mean is it's actually an injection that you inject into your body once a week for a certain amount of time. So when they realized that people were losing weight and quite a significant amount of weight with this drug, the drug company decided that they were going to start to use it as a weight loss medication. And that's how we have Ozempic as we know it today. But before we get into the huge list of side effects, let's talk about exactly what Ozempic is. The active ingredient in Ozempic is called semaglutide. But you might also know it by its brand name, Wagobi. Now, how do people get such rapid weight loss? Well, basically what it does is it mimics a hormone called GLP-1 or glucagon-like peptide. And what this does is it helps to reduce your appetite. So as a result, you don't get hungry and it also slows gastric emptying. What that basically means is the food in your stomach takes a longer time to exit. And this can help you feel fuller for longer. So what we're seeing is people are eating up to 35% fewer calories during the day and they're not feeling hungrier. And that's why we're seeing people losing between five and 15% of their body weight within a year of taking Ozempic. But here's what they're not telling you about Ozempic. Firstly, for some people in the early phases of Ozempic, you might not be losing weight or you might not lose much weight at all. And it can come with some pretty intense side effects, which we'll talk about. This is just the beginning of a whole new wave of weight loss drugs to hit the market and of which we don't actually have very long-term studies to show what the long-term side effects are. But do the health benefits of losing weight really stack up when you look at the huge list of side effects that come with Ozempic and the considerations you need to make before you decide to take this drug? Don't go anywhere. I'm about to talk about the unspoken side effects of Ozempic and answer your burning question, the thing that's probably on your mind, which is, is taking Ozempic really worth it? And is it the best way for you to be able to lose weight? But if you aren't already, please subscribe to this channel. I share science-backed information to help you be healthier without all the nonsense. And if you have a burning question, something I could help you with as a dietitian and nutritionist, please leave a comment. It could be about Ozempic or something related to healthy eating. And I'll try to get back to you and answer your question. All right, let's talk side effects. So in the short term, the majority of people, in fact, 84.1% of people report having gastrointestinal issues. So that includes things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and these things can be quite extreme. This is kind of the norm and the standard if you take something like Ozempic. Now, the nutrition implication of this is that you can get severely dehydrated if you aren't actively rehydrating your body. So if you are taking Ozempic, that is something I absolutely want you to be prioritizing. And on that note, another side effect can be muscle wasting. So if you are drastically eating less, what you're probably not doing is prioritizing protein. And so what we're seeing is people who are reducing the amount of muscle they have and losing fat at the same time. So technically, are they really getting healthier? What we're seeing is people are becoming almost more obese in that the ratio of fat to muscle is skewing further in the unhealthy scale. And this is incredibly problematic for your metabolic health. If you are taking Ozempic, you absolutely need to be prioritizing your protein intake. Let's say you're eating a meal and you probably don't have a huge appetite. I want you to start with a thing that's got protein in it first. What do I mean by that? Well, that could be tofu or chicken or meat. It might be something like dairy, chickpeas, lentils, legumes. These are all sources of protein as well. And this should be a priority for you. And that's gonna to help to buffer and counteract that muscle wasting that could be happening. If you're taking Ozempic, where you get your calories really matter. So I want you to prioritize protein. I want you to prioritize getting enough hydration and maybe pull back from the caffeine a little bit. So now let's talk about some of those longer term impacts. So some people are experiencing impaired vision as a result of taking Ozempic, which I think is pretty life impacting. The other thing you might experience is if you lose weight at quite a rapid pace, you might be left with quite a bit of excessive skin. Now, if you lose weight at a slower pace without taking a drug like Ozempic, you might find that you don't have as much excess skin. And perhaps what I think is the most concerning long-term impacts are people who are reporting increased anxiety levels as a result of taking Ozempic and increased depression rates. 
Now, if you have a history of disordered eating, if you've been a chronic dieter, I think another challenge with Ozempic is it can make you feel a bit crazy around food again, a little bit obsessed with the scale and it starts to become all you think about. And I think this is incredibly problematic. I know we live in a world that tells us that weight loss is good at any cost, but I just don't think that's the case. I think there is a point where the life impact can be so great that it outweighs any benefits that you might get from the weight loss. Now, I don't wanna dismiss the fact that if you are considering taking Ozempic, this isn't like the first time you've ever thought about losing weight. In fact, you've probably tried all the things to lose weight. And now you've reached a point where it feels like this is the last resort. This is something that you think can really change your health. So I do actually think there is a place for a drug like this, but I also think that there are a whole bunch of people who have undiagnosed eating disorders, things like binge eating disorder, who are not getting the treatment that they need. And as a result, when they go into the doctor's office, the doctor's simply seeing them as their size and going, you need weight loss medication. I know for myself when I had binge eating disorder, I was completely misdiagnosed. I was morbidly obese, but every time I'd go into the doctor's office, all they could see was my size. And so he'd say to me, you need to try harder. You need to start this diet. And I wanted to yell, I have tried. I've tried everything. I've tried all the approaches and yet nothing worked. In fact, I just kept gaining more and more weight the more I listened to the advice that I was getting from the people around me. I felt like I had tried absolutely everything. Eventually, I realized that I had an eating disorder that was undiagnosed, that was untreated. And when you have an eating disorder like binge eating disorder, if it goes untreated, it typically gets worse and worse over time. So much so that at the height of my binge eating, I was binge eating multiple times a day, which is what we think of as severe or extreme binge eating disorder. Eventually, I decided that perhaps this doctor I was seeing was not giving me the best advice, that instead of chasing short-term weight loss with these diets I was pursuing, that I needed to work on creating a healthy relationship with food. And very slowly over the course of four years, I lost 20 kilograms, I changed how I thought about food, everything shifted for me. And I know for some people you might feel like you don't have time, you don't have time to slowly create a healthy relationship with food. And I hear you. I want you to do whatever is best for your health and well-being. What I would recommend though is consider maybe there is an underlying disordered relationship with food that has gotten you to this point by listening to all the advice around you about how you should eat and you shouldn't eat. And that is really the core problem, not your willpower or your self-control, but rather you've been so dedicated to trying to lose weight that it's actually led you to gain weight over time by following all these diets. And what I think could be a really good idea is to start receiving treatment for your eating disorder or your disordered eating, even if you do that in tandem with taking Ozempic. Because I think one of the things that I'm seeing is not happening is people working on their relationship with food. So you lose weight with Ozempic, you stop taking the drug. And then what we're seeing is that two thirds of people are regaining the weight within a year. Because if we're not addressing the fundamental thing that got us to the point where we feel out of control with food, then it kind of feels like we're putting a band-aid on a headache. It doesn't quite feel like it makes total sense. Now, if you are someone who struggles with binge eating, emotional eating, feeling out of control with food, this is something I can help you with. I am a specialized eating disorder dietitian and I have a free five-day course that you can take to help you stop binge and emotional eating. I'll leave a link to it down below if you wanna get started with that. Now, let's talk about those really serious impacts of Ozempic. What we're seeing is a lot of people coming forward saying they have thoughts of being unalive. And I think this is an incredibly huge problem and very severe. There's also some cases of people unintentionally becoming unalive. And there are also reports of people who have died, perhaps as a result of taking Ozempic. One story was in the news recently of a 50 year old woman who was taking Ozempic to lose weight for her daughter's wedding. And weeks before the wedding, she died of a heart attack potentially as a result of taking this weight loss medication. I'm sure if you're considering taking Ozempic, you're not doing this lightly and you're realizing that this is a big decision. And if you do decide to take it, please do so with a doctor that you really trust, 
if you can get support for any underlying issue that's gotten you to this point, whether it's disordered eating or an eating disorder. It is still very early days in the research and there are reports of people experiencing increased tumor growth on the thyroid gland, organs not being able to cope, whether it's the liver or the kidneys. So if you do decide to go on Ozempic, please do it with the right medical care, make an informed decision. And I do hope that this video has helped. Now, if you're looking for more science-backed advice on healthy eating without the diet culture BS, please be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm nude underscore nutritionist. I give loads of free recipes and free tips that I think will be really helpful. And if you found anything that we've talked about in this video triggering and you feel like you need some extra support, please do reach out. I'm going to leave a bunch of links below to find the relevant support that you might need at the moment, whether it's for depression or anxiety or an eating disorder. All right, everyone, that's all I have for you today. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.